All right. And the last part we will talk about is the health-related applications of radioactivity because we want to see how they are in our everyday lives. Right? So where do we see radiation? I have two examples here. Uh, radiation can be used in the food industry. It's used to kill uh, any bacteria on a, a, on a food, uh, like for example in the strawberry. One is treated with radiation, one is not. The one that's treated with radiation will last longer because the bacteria on the uh, strawberry has been killed, so it won't rot. And of course, in the second image there, radiation is applied uh, in the medical field extensively, so let's see where they are. For example, you can have scans with radioisotopes. Here, you see a thyroid uh, being scanned, um, uh, image with uh, iodine-131, because thyroid uh, uh, will absorb iodine from your body so if you throw in iodine that is radioactive it will go into your thyroid and it will emit uh, certain signals so we can take a picture of it so all, uh, our iodine atoms are the same whether they are 131 or not um, so they are uh, non -radio radioactive or radioactive your body cannot tell them apart so they all go into your thyroid um, so uh, we can image how well the thyroid is intaking iodine or not. So this is one example of how you can use radioisotopes in the medical field. Another way we can use them is in CT scan, which stands for computated tomography. And this helps us to review the structure in your organs, for example. All right, so it's used to uh, image things such as like the brain, your lungs, and your heart. Uh, and how it works is it's a computer uh, that translate the x-ray images um, into uh, different layers of different layers of images and they can reconstruct that into a 3d image of your organ right so it, it x-rays through your body in, in different angles so that it can have different slices different slices of images and then they reconstruct it into a uh, 3d image and it's mo it's mainly based on the fact that uh, you have different tissues in your body with different densities and and the fluid regions have different densities than non-fluid regions right uh, bones and organs for example and because of this different density uh, the, the x-ray can go through or not go through or go through in different ways it can the computer reads that and reconstruct an image uh, based on densities for example here's a CT scan uh, and it shows that there is a tumor and it turns out tumor is kind of dense so um, it's different from your other cells and other organs and other uh, the fluid regions. So in this patient, unfortunately, there is a brain, there's a tumor in the brain. Using the T CT scan and the x-rays, we can see that. Another use is in a PET scan, and PET scan is called, it stands for a positron emission tomography. So remember positron we learned from the beginning of this lecture is a positive electron. Right? So it turns out a certain um, atom is used regularly is fluorine 18, it is, a fluor is it is a positron emitter. So how it works is they get this fluorine uh, that is radioactive and they replace that fluorine for, or they replace a alcohol group um, on, sugar, on a molecule of sugar, they replace that alcohol group on a molecule of sugar for the fluorine uh, 18 atom. Now, why did you do that? Um, what happens is uh, your, your body, again, cannot recognize it because it's, the change is so small. Uh, it gets strict in thinking that it's also sugar. Now, once the fluorine then uh, emits the positron, the positron will um, combine with electrons in, in, uh, in, the environment, in the cell environment, and this will produce a gamma ray. Now, this gamma ray then can be captured by a by, uh, by a camera and a computer recreates a 3D image of uh, of your organs, very similar to um, a, a CT scan, right? But this one, uh, the difference is that you are focusing on organs in your body that loves sugars, so therefore concentrates it. So you only see images where um, where there where there's a high concentration of this sugar. Oh, now, so where is sugar located? Well. For two things, we know that cancer cells love to grow, need to grow fast, and what can fuel the, the growth of cells is sugar, right? That's their fuel. So it turns out that this, this 
process works because they, uh, the cancer cells will absorb a lot of the sugar. If any region in your body lights up with this thing, that means that that region has a lot of sugar, and therefore it could possibly be because there is a tumor there, right? It's cancer cells that live there. So let's see how this works. Well, also, so this is a body. Notice that the brain is, uh, the head is very dark too. That means it's very lit up with its PET scan. So um, does that mean your brain has cancer? Not necessarily. No, in this case, right? It turns out your brain feeds off of sugar, so there's a lot of sugar up there, so it also absorbs this um, um, uh, this radioactive uh, sugar molecule. So let's ignore that for now. So what is really um, a concern here is with this patient with lung cancer. So because it has because this patient has lung cancer, there are um, high concentration of this sugar around the patient's lung regions, right? As noted by this arrows here. So they want to see if this treatment is killing that cancer or not. So after two weeks, they take another image of the PET, of the PET scan, and they see here that that region has been shrinking down, right? So that means that the treatment maybe has worked. Six weeks later, you don't see it at all, right? So maybe the treatment has worked and this person has no more lung, uh, uh, cancer cells. So this is again uh, how PET scans work. They absorb, uh, they, 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 it is a sugar and that sugar is um, radioisotope labeled. So any cells in your body that has cancer, that is cancer, will absorb this sugar molecule and therefore will light up. And so you will see this uh, dark part when you take the PET scan. Another thing that is related is called MRI. Now this is actually it shouldn't be in this chapter because it's not radioactive, but people do confuse it a lot. It's called magnetic resonance imaging. It used to be called nuclear magne magnetic resonance imaging, but the term nuclear was too scary, so they took that away, and now it's just simply called MRI. This is an imaging technique that does not involve radiation. Emphasis does not involve radiation. It is the least invasive imaging method available. It works great. And it's based on absorption of energy when protons and hydrogen atoms are excited by a strong magnetic field way beyond the scope of this class but you just need to know that it's not radiation it's about hydrogen and it's very expensive this image that's why we don't use it as much because it's quite expensive even though it gives you the best image of all of them right this is an example of an MRI scan uh, that shows uh, the heart and the lungs for example 